create the church in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Book of Exodus. Book of Exodus. Those were in the morning, I said, this year I'll give you a treat. I'll preach different sermons. I always say it's hard enough to find one. You hold it, you just hold it dearly. Wherever they call you, th that same one never grows old. <coughs> but let's look at Exodus. Verse 1 to 4. My Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. I said Exodus chapter 14. <laughs> you know it, Moose. <laughs> uh -uh. Let's go to 14. I thought I told you. Verse 1 to 4. I am so sorry. It happens. 14 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. By the way, our sermon title is Ten and Encamp. Ten and Encamp. So if you sleep now, at least you heard the sermon title. I'm amazed at people who sleep at church. They will not sleep anyway. But I'm always amazed that, you know, us preachers, when you are preparing a sermon, you don't sleep. Then you are sleeping. No problem. But then when we come here, you sleep again. <laughs> it's not fair. Ah, let's go with the verse. Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Piha Hiroth between Migdol and the sea, over against Baselphon, before it ye shall encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh, uh, catch this someone. So the reason for encamping is, is explained here. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land and in the wilderness, and the wilderness had shut them up. And then verse 4, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. <coughs> and I will be honored amongst Pharaoh. And upon all his hosts, that the Egyptian may know uh, that I am the Lord, and they did so. Maybe just a small preamble there. When Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh the first question Pharaoh said was, who, who is this God that I should listen to him? So now we are being given the answer. So God says, now that he wants to know, I will show him who this God is. Once you get this, the rest is comment. The Lord always blesses the reading of his word. Uh, I uh, like to recognize my friends from the Adventist Athletics Club. Uh, I do this because at times I don't see them. Uh, at times I run fast. So by the time I finish, they are still sorting it out somewhere. <laughs> so let me greet them here. Because here, there it is. Uh, these are, but the reason I greet you, friends, is this, is this ministry has become so powerful. Actually, we have one of our friends is getting into a baptismal class, uh, Tinashe. Uh, most of the guys come and join the club, not from the faith. Last year, we had four to five baptisms. And some of them are already getting into the baptism. Tinashe came with me this morning. And he's going to be joining Elder Solombela's class. And this is a ministry. Last week, we got, two weeks ago, we got a letter from the General Conference uh, just acknowledging the athletic evangelism that is done by the club. So let me just welcome you. Uh, just stand where you are. Let's just stand where you are. Let's just welcome you. Uh, just stand where you are. Don't be shy. I know you. I won't call you by name. Vulindel, I saw you. Please stand. Yes, Solombela, stand. Lolo, stand. Uh, there are two, my two elders. 
Elder Pinganjira at the back and Elder Tatis. Pinganjira did uh, some funny things last year. This man ran one race and went for comrades. I was praying all the way, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and lo and behold, he made it. Thank you, friends. May the Lord bless you. I have a special friend as well, oh, my son, who I want to introduce. Don't worry about the time. I normally preach for 15, 20 minutes. I just have someone who will just uh, maybe push it by five minutes. Mine will be 20, I promise you. But don't start counting from now. This is, we are waiting at the lobby. <coughs> I have a 2010, Pastor Papu was uh, doing a, a crusade. And uh, his title was that God sees. And he spoke about uh, Hagar, uh, where she was saying, I know that God sees. This young man was not an Adventist at the time. He was young. He's actually my son's, sorry, my sister's son, eldest son. So he came to me and said, Uncle, how can I join this church? And I said to him, uh, by that time I was uh, still worshiping at another church in Pretoria. And I said to him, no, this is what we do. A year or two later, he says, Uncle, I want to become vegetarian. And I said, it might be tough, but God will lead you. And then he became vegetarian. Some years later, I said, uh, Uncle, can I have the account details for something? I want to be a tithe-paying member of something church. Now, two weeks ago, he told me he's getting married. And he is married in the Adventist church. One of our president pastors joined them in holy matrimony. So allow me, it gives me a sense of humility to thank God for what he does. Through sinful people like us, but people can see there is genuine intention to praise God. So allow me, my son, Shalom, and his uh, wonderful wife, Hilary, at the back. Just stand up so that we can welcome you. Stand up. Stand up. <coughs> And the church said, Amen. thank you. Let's go to the text. <clears throat> Sean, why are we not saying 186? Aye, let's go. One, just one. Let's steer the waters. Let's steer the waters. Just oh, one. See, see,
Shall we bow together and pray, Father? We stand by the banks of the Jordan River. We see the promised land from afar. Help us to get there. Part the waters for we have prayed in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. So the Bible says, tell them to turn and then come. So that when Pharaoh sees them, he will say, these children have no way out. Let's go and attack. Let me just use some background information here. If you go to verse 17 of chapter 13 of Exodus, the Bible, said, the Bible says, and when Pharaoh let the people go, then God let them not through the way of the wilderness. The Bible says it was a shorter way to get to Canaan land. Please come. Uh, let's make an illustration. Please come. Let's make an illustration. Because some of us read the Bible and we don't have this application. We think this thing didn't happen. Let's try and explain this. Come, gentlemen. I'm not asking you to preach. Please, just come. <clears throat> just come here. No, no, today I'm going to respect you so much. Uh, just come here. Uh, no, no, come here. I said here. <clears throat> just come here. And relax. Relax. You don't have to do anything. Just smile. <clears throat> so, now God does this. He says, let me lead them. Not through the way of the wilderness. Because if they go through the way of the wilderness, it is a shorter way. It might take a few days to get there. However, peradventure, this is what the verse says, peradventure, they will meet the enemy. They will meet the Philistines. And then they will be forced to repent and go back to Egypt. But we have spent so much energy on this project we cannot allow them to come back now. Let me explain this to you. Maybe you'll understand. When all the plagues were coming down, the first time Moses goes to Pharaoh, Pharaoh says, okay, in chapter 8, verse 28, so it, so, somewhere there of Exodus, he says, okay, let them go, but don't go too far. No, let me speak to your faith this morning. There is a faith that says you can go, but don't go very far. Go so that I can keep seeing you where you are. Some of us have that contract with, 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 with our faith, that we have a faith where we can't really escape from our past activities. We go, but we still look back and say, hey, this thing was very nice. If only those days. There are some people who, can, who still serve the sins that they performed in the past, where they will tell you, ah, me, such people, me, in the past, I will just. So in that thing, that demon is still with you. Go, but don't go very far so that I can still see you. After a couple of plagues, then the Bible says, no. And he came back, and then he says, go. He was talking about the men's conference. He says, go, but don't go, but go, but let only the men go. Let your women stay behind. Let me talk to families. Some families are at church, some are not there. So this is where he says, let only the men go, but keep the women. When you keep the women, you know for sure these guys will keep coming back. So there is no total emancipation there. So you can go, but you know that your family is there. While you are here, but you know once you get back home, you need to go back to Egypt. Because you left some treasures in Egypt. And then a couple of plagues come in, and then he says, okay, in chapter uh, 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 12, uh, verse 24, there about, he says, okay, let them go. Uh, let them go. But let your flock remain behind. Let me talk to someone here. Some of the flocks are in our pockets. Some of the flocks are in our pockets. We, we worship in everything that we can do, but we don't worship with our pockets. Which is why when you look at the book of uh, chapter 22 of Genesis, and the Bible says to, Mo, to Abraham, Abraham, take your son. And Abraham relaxes. There are two. And says, no, take the one whom you love. And then says, take the only one. And then go and sacrifice. So God is asking us, to sacrifice that which we want the most. When, they, when, when this thing goes around and Bongani says, let's build, and we see people have a choice to sacrifice either Isaac or Ishmael. And most of the time, Ishmael is sacrificed. You can see from the 10 rands, that is an Ishmael that is sacrificed. And the 100 rands remains in the pocket, and that is Isaac. So here he says, go and sacrifice, but let your flock remain. But here, 
God says, I cannot, after investing so much, allow, please walk with me, allow these children to come back. So watch this map. So the children of Israel are here. This is, this is I don't know how many of you have been to the Holy Land. Don't raise your hand. I don't know how many of you have been to the Holy Land. Those in family ministries and youth, please take people to the Holy Land. It will strengthen their faith. They understand this is not, this is not fake, fake. This religion or this faith is not fake, fake. These things happened. I thought I will get an amen, Melus. These things happened. So take people there. I belong to a, a, another group of uh, couples led by my friend here, Taban Mapos. He's threatening, us to take, he's threatening to take us to, to the Holy Land. So I'm his friend. I'm his friend. <laughs> See what happens after that trip. Now picture this. This is Egypt. This is your, this is your contract now. <laughs> this is Egypt. Are you with me? No, let me not shout. This is Egypt. This is Canaan. Are you with me? Now here, at the bottom, we have what you call the Arabian Sea. Just at the top of the Arabian Sea, we have what you call the Red Sea. Listen careful, children of God. This sermon is, 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 is will not be very long, so just, just keep there. So we have the Arabian, we have the Red Sea. Now here, we have what you call the Great Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. Are you with me? So the children of Israel are here. They need to get here. The easiest way and the shortest way for these children to get there is to come and come through the wilderness of the Philistines. But God knew that there are Philistines here. Listen careful. This might be your situation. God knew that in escaping Egypt, there are Philistines here. And these Philistines, pastor, they are, they are warlike. These people are used to war. Look at what Ellen White says in the same chapter in Patriots and Prophets. She says, the children of Israel had been in captivity for over 400 years. They had no skill of war whatsoever. That's number one. Number two, this same God who has taken them out of Egypt, they did not understand him yet. Number three, their faith was still very weak. Hey. Their faith was still very weak. So taking them through this way will jeopardize their faith and they'll come back to Egypt. But God had invested so much in this project that he cannot allow that. Let me pause here. Let me pause here. God does not prescribe victories for the children of Israel here. Ah, you are not with me. God does not offer them victory here. Because once they get victory here and become successful, they will think it is through their own power. Number two, God does not prevent this war here. Let me talk to someone. There are things that have happened in your life that God did deliberately not remove. You are still in that situation. God did not deliberately remove it because God is in a project of faith building. Until your faith is ripe, God will make you pass through. But until then, you will stay here. So therefore, the Bible says, tell them. Now understand this concept. When they thought they were going that way, God says, ah, tell them to turn. When they have turned, tell them to relax. They, we are not moving anywhere. So then God leads them this way. Now are, I'm finishing with you guys. So God leads them this way. So he takes them, the Bible says, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses, which is here, actually from Koshen, which is here, to Ramses, Ramses to Sakoth. Then some Sakoth, then he says, then they were coming this way. They make another turn and went this way. Are we together? And then they get to a place between Migdol and the sea. Are you with me? Now, but look, on that sea, we have two gulfs, the Suez Canal, which is part of the Red Sea, and the Aquaba, with another canal, which is this side. So God makes them come this way. So they turn, and they park, and they camp here. But God deliberately does not lead them through the shorter way. 
Gentlemen, thank you. Listen to the sermon now. Now, this is what I'm saying to someone here. God knows where you want to go. And God is not in a hurry to get you there. But God is in a hurry to get your faith ripe. Which is why the Bible says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in this world? Because God is about building faith. And the Bible says, in, in, in Hebrews chapter, 13, chapter 11, verse 13 says, all these died, not without having received the promises, but they had this faith. He says, but they saw these things. They saw them from afar. They were persuaded by them that these things are good. And then the Bible says, and they embraced them. So what God wanted to do, listen to me careful, what God wanted to do to the children of Israel was to see this Canaan, be persuaded of this Canaan, and come back here and start to leave the Canaan and embrace this Canaan. That one is we are going this way, but you know there is a Canaan that I will get to. <laughs> An interesting part. The Bible says, as they journeyed through, there was a, a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. So as they were walking through from Ramses to Sakot, the Bible says they journeyed with 600,000 men, excluding children. So as they were going through, the Bible says, and the pillar, remember they left at twilight, and they had their last meal with their loins gathered. And then they left because they have a Canaan to inherit. So as, as, they, as they went through, then the pillar, <laughs> ah, man, listen to me. And then the pillar of cloud, they kept following the pillar of cloud. And then it says, and they got weary. But when they got weary, they looked at the pillar of cloud. The pillar of cloud kept moving. The pillar of cloud kept pulling them to say, let's go. I understand you are weary, but let's keep going. So as they kept going until they get here to where they're supposed to cross, then the Bible says, God said to Moses, tell them to turn. They look at the pillar of cloud. The pillar of cloud has turned. What makes a lot of sense that the pillar would continue straight, the pillar of cloud turns. And when the pillar of cloud turns, when they think they are still walking, the still of cloud remains suspended and does not move any further. And it stays there. And therefore then says, now that you are here, tell them to encamp. Let me just break this down. Some of us could be in situations where we wanted to be at some places where we are not now. We wanted God, we're asking God, God, how come it has taken me so long to be here? But God knows that your faith is not yet ready for you to cross through this. That perchance you will meet some obstacles, and then you go back. God is not yet ready also to allow you to go back. God is saying, even though you are weary, look up. And when you see that there is a presence of a cloud, you are in safe hands. It might take you long to stay here, but God has a plan for you. Now, I want to challenge someone here. Some of us then would say, now when they go to the Red Sea, now then the Bible says this, this is a powerful story. Then the Bible says, when they look at that, when your enemy looks at that, point number three, this is not always about you. It's about your enemy. <laughs> this is about your enemy and the unbeliever. The reason why you are encamping here is because of the unbeliever who has to see the power of God. The reason why you are still here, other than your faith, is that something has to give so that God can be glorified. So you are a sermon on your own. God is using you as a vessel or as a sermon so that people will say, because of what I have seen him doing to that, to that person, I praise him more. He has persevered. He has stayed by the, by, by, by the banks of the Red Sea for this long, and God has made a way. Yeah, hear me carefully. And then the Bible says, and then when they came through, and then the Bible says, so when Pharaoh will see them, he will say, they are stranded. Uh, I'll catch this one, guys. Some of our situations, God is just trying to see. 
when your enemies is see when your enemies see this, they'll think you are stranded. But God says, uh, it is Paul in Romans chapter eight, verse eighteen. She, he says, For I reckon that the afflictions of this present times are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be of us. And Paul says in Corinthians, we therefore not lose heart because while we seem to be wasting on the outside, but inside God is working for us an eternal glory that far outweighs others. So your situation, let me, let me just take courage you. You might have been here for some time. You might be in this thing, but there is a cloud at the top. And there is an enemy who thinks you are in trap. And God has your best interest. Now let me quickly move here and say someone, God is building your faith. God is building your faith. Elder Masondo, there is a song that says, I'm, I'm learning to lean. I don't know how we can sing this and just understand it. Gentlemen and ladies, you might not already be there, but we are learning. But we are learning. This is this experience. We are learning to lean on God. We are learning. We are learning to lean on God. As they come forward, let me just explain this point here. It is those who have made the decision. It is those who have made the decision to move. To move from Goshen, from Ramses, to Sakoth, and they've gotten to the Red Sea. It is only those who the Red Sea will open for. For those that are still by Goshen, for those that are still on the other side, there is no Red Sea that is going to open for you. Can I just challenge someone here as we lean and we learn to lean on God? Is your situation close enough to the Red Sea? Let's do it again, learning to lean on Jesus. As we move towards the close, ah, let me call my friend here. I don't really want to look at him because whatever excuse he's going to give, I'm not taking. And he always says, let's close this in righteousness. And the children of Israel are here. Pastor Nonofo, come forward. We want to close this in righteousness. And the children of Israel are here. And the army of the Egyptians, look at the Mets. Pharaoh dispatches 600 of his chariots. The Bible says there were 600,000 men who left Egypt. And Pharaoh quickly does his math and says one for every thousand. Not knowing there is a God in heaven who he will meet today, who does not need the chariots, but who is going on singly handedly. You take 600 for 600,000, God takes one for 600,000. So they come here to the shores of the Red Sea. And the Bible says, and the angel of the Lord, 
that was ahead of them retreated to the back and he said to Moses, Moses, tell them, tell them to move forward. Tell them to move forward. Uh, let me challenge you. Tell them, move forward. Forward. And then the angel came back and pushed them towards the Red Sea. And Moses lifted his stick. And the rest is history. And the Bible says, and the children of Israel walked through dry ground. But when the enemy sees this, which is why David says, for he prepared, for he prepared, for he prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. He prepared the Red Sea in the presence of my enemies that they can eat of God's glory. The Bible says, when they left Egypt, there were a crowd, a crowd of the multitude, but there were also those who were escaping the floods. But that day God did not segregate. To say you came here because you're running away from Pharaoh. But all of you, by just being by the Red Sea, you can walk on dry ground. Our children of God, as long as you are by the Red Sea, maybe just taking you a bit long to be happy in your marriage. But you're just by the Red Sea. God does not want you to retreat forward. Some of us might have been looking for jobs. Forward. You are at the right place. Some of us may have been so unhappy and just wanted to give up on this church project. That this church project, this project called church is just taking forever for me. But God says forward. Pastor, let's close this in righteousness. Let's close this in righteousness. Come, my friend. Let's close it in righteousness. One word for the saints. And then we pray. I don't know what he wants. Maybe should I pray or preach? I don't know. Um, it is good to also notice, Elder, that the same God Pharaoh is asking about in the book of Exodus appears to Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3. And he says, Moses, this is holy ground. The Bible says there was a burning bush. But the bush was not consumed. The Bible says then Moses asked God, God, I hear you are saying I should go and take the children of Israel out of the land into Canaan. And then Moses says, but whom shall I say has sent me? And then God says, I am that I am. Now, for you to understand, you need to recognize something. That the only theology that Moses knew was the theology of Egypt. For when you ask for a God in Egypt, you're asking for the God's location and his limitation. And God says to Moses, I have no location. And I have no limitation. I am that I am. And in the Hebrew translation as a pastor, the word I am that I am there is the Hebrew word Haya, which means I become whatever they want me to become. If they want a deliverer, I will become a deliverer for them. If they want a provider, I will pro become a provider for them. And then the book of Exodus chapter 14, Pharaoh is arrogant. For he says they are limited. But allow me to say also God here appears with divine arrogancy. For God does not appear. He says to Moses, what do you have in your hand? And Moses says, but just a rod. The Jewish understanding of a rod is that a rod is passed on from generation to generation. When I have a son, I would write my name on that rod as evidence of what the rod has done for me. And when you give over to the next son, you write your name. And Moses had the rod of his forefathers. That is the evidence of what the God of Israel has done for Moses' family. And God says, stretch this rod. 
into this river or this sea. And the Bible says, and the Red Sea departed. Allow me to say that Moses opened the Red Sea with the evidence of his forefathers' experience with God. Allow me to say to you this morning or this afternoon, I don't know the Red Seas that are in front of you, but you know what God has done in your family. Before you look for the evidence of his absence, look for the evidence of his presence. And I sit down and as I pray, can I pray with someone here who says, Lord, I am like the children of Israel. There's a Red Sea before me. But I'm also troubled like them because I don't know what you'll do. For they said to Moses, Moses, did you take us out of the land of Egypt to die here where there's no grave? Oh, can I say this to all of us? God has overperformed, but God is still accused of not doing enough. You know what God has done in your life, but just the sea before you, then you are troubled of God's power. But hear the words of the preachers this morning. The Red Sea is not there to destroy you. It is there to consume your enemies. Can I also say this? As the Red Sea departed, as Israel was passing, the biggest problem was Pharaoh is that he wanted to benefit in the blessing of Israel. Please hear the words. Don't pass in the Red Seas that are not for you. They will swallow you. Leave us to pass on our own blessings. The greatest problem of Adventism is this. You want to benefit in other people's blessings. Leave our blessings alone so that we pass through the dry grounds. Can I pray with someone who's in the Red Sea this morning? Is there someone who's in the Red Sea this morning? Stand up wherever you are. pray together. Our Father and our God who is in heaven. Sometimes we ask ourselves questions. Whether you are still there or you are absent. Because sight kill our hope and sight kill our faith. Father, there's people standing here this hour who have been doubting your existence for so long. For the army of Pharaoh is visible in our lives. But you are invisible. We can't see you, but we can see our problems. Father, I pray that you arrive at our point of need. I know you will not use the same intensity to our problems as our problems have the same intensity. For you are a very powerful God. You cannot just even use this all of your power to deliver one of us. I pray this morning, Father, that only a rot should open the Red Seas in front of us. Father, I pray for a soul that is here that has been going through a lot for they think that, Lord, this Red Sea will swallow them and Pharaoh's army would have won. But this afternoon we have heard that our God is powerful in the 66 books of the Bible, there's never a verse that says God has failed humanity. And I know that you will not start now. I pray that, Father, you come and deliver us. Show yourself unto us, each and every one of us. Open the Red Seas so that we pass in dry grounds. And we thank you that after Exodus 14, there's Exodus chapter 15, where your children begin to praise when they look back. And then we can able to say all of us, oh Lord, nam mangala. When we look back to where you have brought us. And your prophet Ellen White says, we have nothing to fear for the future, lest we forget where the Lord has brought us from. Father, I pray that you show yourself to each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed, amen.